Today I'm going to be talking about the power of a prophetic charge. And I'll also be talking about how we're going to work it together with what we always do here. But before we do that, I'm going to play for you a very special testimony. It helps that the person who did this testimony is a prolific video editor and compositor. So it makes it all so fantastic. He was able to go into the archives of the church and find the particular instance when God put the prophetic unction in my mouth. And then he goes on to clips he had filmed when the prophecy came to pass. Isn't that amazing? Well, we're going to be taking this very special testimony from somebody called Crucifix. Glory be to God. For he would choose to do it by himself, by himself, by himself. Therefore, the open door to travel. Dubai, open. South Africa, open. USA, open. Schengen, open. Receive this gift of the mighty God in the name of Jesus. This you will not do in your power and in your might, but by the finger of the Almighty. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Wow, that is so exciting. Those were the actual clips of the first time that he would travel outside of the nation of Nigeria. Now, for those who are in Nigeria, you will know how much of a miracle that is because it's often very difficult to get your first visa, your first visa. You have to have that much money in the bank. You have to have that much money in the bank. You have to have all these references and all kinds of stuff. It's often a chore, an extreme chore. It's literally a miracle. And there are times, that particular Sunday, I came to church. I was going to preach and God just scattered as usual and just went in a totally different direction. And I remember I said, you know, people should come forward. God was going to move. Those who had their passports with them should also show up. And he came forth and he brought his, you know, documents. And we were praying and the Lord brought this word out. What a mighty miracle it is. What a mighty miracle it is. I'm going to talk about the power of a prophetic charge. I'm going to start with... A scripture from the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 4 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and the reason why I'm reading this particular scripture is to tell you that during his earthly walk even Jesus had to be led by the Spirit now Understand this, there's a difference between being led by the word and being led by the spirit. We all should be led by the word and we must never violate the principles of the word. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit never violates the word. The Holy Spirit never violates the logos of God because the Holy Spirit is God, you know, and um, God is not schizophrenic. He does not give contrary directives, okay? So the word of God is the foundation. But in addition to his written word, and even in addition to his inspired word, the rhema of God, he gives us a prophetic unction or a prophetic counsel. Every once in a while, the Holy Spirit will give us a prompt. It's like being in that navigator on your driving, and it says, you know, um, in 500 meters, turn left. In 600 meters, turn right. Um, stay on the second lane and veer slightly left and go on this. Those are the promptings that come as you're on 
your journey. The Holy Spirit is our navigator. You see, God has given us such a wonderful gift in the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, you know, he's our counselor, our comforter. He's our guide. He says, I will lead you into all truth. So even the study of his word must be guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, this prospect of prophetic leading or prophetic direction is somewhat fearful because of the abuse that has happened a lot in the body of Christ. So many places where this has been totally abused. You see, the truth is, like I said to you, the channel that God is using sometimes stains, you know, sometimes shows up in the words that are given, whether it's a message, a sermon, or it's a prophetic charge. They speak forth from their own perceptions. And sometimes we we issue forth interpretations of what we think God is saying and not what God is saying. You know, our minds get in the way. And we've seen so much abuse happen in the body of Christ where people have been prophesied out of their jobs, prophesied out of their marriages, prophesied out of their homes. You know, the Bible tells us that the words of a talebearer enter into the innermost parts of the belly. So words that come from the pit of hell in the name of prophecy has wreaked so much havoc. It has separated, the Bible speaks about a, a talebearer separating the chiefest of friends. So in their places you go to where the, the whole of the total package is, you know, predicated upon prophetic word, prophetic unction, prophetic word, and they, they don't have the undergirding of balanced knowledge of scripture. They don't have the undergirding of the supremacy of the word of God. They don't recognize that the, the word of God is the final charge on everything and the final judge of everything. When you put the prophetic word and the written word on the same level, you, you have a problem. Because the prophetic word must always agree with the written word. Always. If it violates. Paul says, even if anybody will come or even if an angel, in other words, a supernatural occurrence, should happen and say anything contrary to this word, then he says, let him be accursed. Chuck him out. Chuck it out. You know, so the prophetic word must be judged by the word and not vice versa. Trust the word of God. Trust the word of God. Trust the word of God above everything else. Anybody that that prophesies anything that violates any scripture, put it aside. When the devil attempted to prophesy to Jesus, he said, throw yourself down, you know, and uh, is it not written in the word that... Uh, he has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. So throw yourself down and uh, God is going to save you. What did Jesus answer? He says, it is written. He responded to him by the word. So every so-called prophetic charge must be judged by the word. The word is the final authority. Even if that prophetic charge is quoting a scripture, the Bible says that scriptures must be judged by scriptures. So there is a balance. Weigh it round and look at it. I have seen the spirit of witchcraft. And what is witchcraft? Witchcraft in its essence is illegitimate authority. That's what it is. Witchcraft is attempting to take upon yourself to usurp another person's authority. You know, God has said to us that we have the final authority concerning our own destiny. We are the prophet of our own seventh day. He says you have the anointing and the unction in you and you do not need that any man should teach you. Now, a spirit that comes and wants you to be led by an external hard drive that, that wants you to do what God said to them not what God said to you is witchcraft. All right? That's why even when you're listening to your pastor, even when you are sitting in church, even when you are hearing the anointed word, you judge it with the witness in your heart. The witness of the Holy Spirit in your heart. In your heart. And witchcraft sometimes will come and try to put you under pressure, uh, put you in a hurry concerning the thing. You know, you've got to make up your mind now, now, now. It's got to be now, now. You know, the Bible says, he that believes makes no haste. And belief is faith. 
Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So anything that puts you in a hurry is not of God. You know? So often, that's how witchcraft comes. Um, so, yeah. How do we know who to trust? Number one, trust the word. Trust the word of God. Trust what he has written in his Bible. And of course, the problem with that is that it means the more the Bible you know, the safer you are when it comes to operating in spiritual things. So you can't, you can't afford not to grow. You can't afford not to study the Bible. You can't afford not to get knowledge in the word of God. It's so important. Number two, prove them first. You know what Paul said when he was going to send Timothy to the church, to a particular church, another church, somewhere else. He says, for you know the proof of him. How as a son serving his father, he has served me in ministry. So let them first be proved. When he spoke about the appointment of deacons, he repeated the same thing. Let them first be proved. So prove your ministers. Prove guys. You know, um, I like the, the Bible, the, the woman the Bible calls the great woman. The Bible says she saw a prophet that kept on coming in their direction. And she said, I perceive that this is a man of God. I perceive, I suspect, I sense, I assume. But she proved him first. She invited him for a meal. She didn't just see some strange prophet walking on the street and then she, you know, built a room in her house and brought him into her household and into her confidence and literally, do you understand what I'm saying? Commit her whole life into his hands. She didn't do that. She come, come and have dinner with us. Come and have lunch with us. And she watched him. There are many men you will invite and you will see greed. You will see a lack of self-control. You will see how they would go for, you know, the biggest piece of meat there is. You see a lack of humility in your interaction with them. <laughs> Prove them first. She did it in a graduated structure. She first said, come for a meal. And after the meal, she said, now I know that this is a man of God. And she Amen. goes to her husband Amen. and says, let's make him a room. In other words, you saw how he conducted himself when he came to, he didn't ask us for anything. He didn't prophesy upon us, doom if we don't sell all our property and sow into his ministry. You know, he didn't take advantage of the kindness that we had shown to him. He showed that he was sincere and he was a simple human being just like everybody else. But just that God has chosen to use him the way that Amen. God does. So Amen. prove them first. There's nothing Amen. wrong yeah. with proving ministry you must prove them first prove them first and then thirdly men do make mistakes I, I I make mistakes trust me and you know every time when I function in the spirit it's great and wonderful when I function in the flesh it's terrible the Bible says the prophets of God they prophesy severally as God wills these same gifts operates as God wills. So you can't turn it on and off like a switch. You can't just wake up and decide, I want to prophesy to this one today. I want to prophesy to that one today. God has made me speak to people that I would normally not even have wanted to say a word to, you know. So it's as God wills. And so it's all about putting your ears to God's mouth Hallelujah. to hear what he says. You know that prophet Balaam in the old covenant, he had a reputation. They said to him, they said about him, I'm sorry, anybody he cursed is cursed, anybody he blessed is blessed. And as the whole dialogue went on and you know when he went up this mountain and he was cursing, he wanted to do because there was the promise of great money, great riches that came with it. And he wanted to follow what the king wanted. But the king missed the point. It's not about what you want. Getting God to say what you want. God never does that. The Bible says he works all things according to his will. It's not according to your offering. It's not according to your bribe. It's not according to your <laughs> gift. It's not according to how loud you scream. It's not according to how willful you are. There is nothing you can do to bend God's will. And when you try to do that, and by the way, that's what witchcraft is. Mm. 
when you try to do that, God may step back and release you to your own devices. He did that to the same Balaam. Remember when Balaam, the prophet, the one that was said to, you know, to be an oracle of God when he was so willful about it and was trying so hard to convince God that let me curse the nation of Israel. God said to him, go. So he got an affirmative from God that was no affirmative at all. It was a go of judgment. So what kind of go are you getting? You've got to ask yourself that. Did I push and pressure and whine and continue in my stubbornness? God will give up on your stiff nakedness. And he says, go. And the same God who said go, put a warrior angel on his path. And the warrior's angel had had taken out his sword and was going to take the head off of Balaam's shoulders. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was going to kill him dead. The same God said, go and put on that path your very destruction because you are already minded of what you want to do. Don't you, we don't push God. We submit to him. He's not an idol somewhere that is dumb. He, he is the source of all wisdom. And he works all things that he works according to the counsel of his will, not ours. Balaam got up there and wanted to follow the flesh. And he would have said exactly the opposite. I, I remember one time, I, my wife was pregnant at the time and God was doing some mighty massive things uh, for us and through us. And uh, I walked into a hospital and the people in the hospital recognized me and I was this powerful man of God and um, it put me under pressure I felt I was obligated to prophesy and so I began to prophesy when God wasn't saying anything um, sometimes I would stand in front of a, a pregnant woman and the Lord would just tell me what the sex of the baby is sometimes the baby the gender of the baby sometimes God does that to affirm his prophets to help the person you are prophesying to know that truly the power of God is at hand. And I've seen God do that again and again and again and again and again. So this particular day, I felt obligated to prophesy. So the, everybody, you know, I mean, you can imagine, I just walked into a hospital and people just stood up and many of them knelt down and wanted me to pray for them because somebody had just finished sharing and telling about how God uses me. So I felt under pressure, but God wasn't saying anything. I could easily have simply said, well, God is not saying anything, but thank God that his word is true and never bends. And the word says, you shall be saved in childbearing if, and I would have done that easily. And I'm sure God in his mercy would probably have actually said something. But you know, no, I was the man of God. So I held the first woman's hand and I said, oh, shut up, blah, 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 blah. glory be to God. You are going to have a son. <laughs> she ended up having a girl. I took the second person's hand and I said, you're going to have a girl. She ended up having a boy. In other words, I totally misbehaved that day. I was in the flesh. I was not connected to God. My nakedness was, and you know, these were the people in my wife's antenatal class. So I was there when they gave birth. <laughs> so I had to, I had to swallow my pride and apologize to them. I said, look, honestly, I was in the flesh. I prophesied because I felt obligated to do so. So if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. I'm just yes, as good sir. as the next door person. That's why you have the Holy Spirit in you. And that is the final judge of all. The Word of God and the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So I said from this scripture, Luke chapter 4 verse 1, And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. So even the Son of God, even God manifested in the flesh, was led by a specific leading of the Spirit to go and do a specific thing at a specific time. So even Jesus was a beneficiary of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Let's see a couple of other scriptures. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And you've got to be rest assured. It says, For you have not received again the spirit of bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption 
whereby we cry, Abba, Father, for the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. You see, this tells you how the leading of God comes. God is not a bully. It's witchcraft that is a bully. Well, in any case, the reason why I went to this scripture is to tell you that it's your privilege. It says those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if you are a son of God, it's your privilege to be led by the Spirit of God. If you are born again, you are expected to be led by the Spirit of God. It means you have access to the leading of the Holy Spirit who speaks to you. And I'm not talking flaky things. Anybody who thinks the Holy Spirit will literally remote control. Okay, stand up, open your mouth, close your eyes, sit down. Okay, put one leg forward. The Holy Spirit does not deal with that. <laughs> I've seen people who've become that fluky. Take yes, the sir. word to the extreme. Yes, sir. Of course, he wants you to use your initiative. Of course, he wants you to use your wisdom. But when it's a strategic decision that needs to be made, when it's an important thing that needs to be done, when he needs to realign your steps to go in the path of God's plan for your life, the Holy Spirit will always speak out. He will speak out through prophets. He will speak out through the inward witness. He will speak out through various means. Hallelujah. I pray somebody is being blessed this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then now we go to Timothy, and this is important. I want you to see this. Now he says, This charge I commit unto thee. This is Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. And I want you to go study this on your own because this is critical and this is important. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies that went on before you, that thou mightest by them war a good warfare. This sounds complicated. Let me read it from the NLT. Timothy, my son, here are my instructions. So a charge is a set of instructions okay here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier this immediately tells you that when a charge comes when a prophetic instruction comes it will always be in harmony with the prophetic instructions that have come before mm -hmm. concerning you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this charge i commit to you so that you through them might war a good warfare you see there's sometimes god speaks to all of us but then there's sometimes god will speak to you he says may they help you fight well the lord's battles you know the same god who said to elisha go to zarephath for there mm -hmm. i have ordained a widow woman to feed you he is the same God who had said just a little earlier, says, go to the well, for I have ordained ravens to feed you there. Those are specific instructions. God didn't instruct the whole of Israel to go to the brook. He spoke to his prophet. It was a specific instruction to a specific person. That's what's called a prophetic charge. That's what's called a prophetic charge. And you know, it's one of the ways, you know, not everybody is called to do everything. The Bible says to one, the gift of healing to another, the gift of faith to another. Let's, let's read that scripture together. You gave me the scripture earlier on, my darling. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8. Okay, let's even start from verse 6, verse 4. It says, now there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations or the way these gifts function or express themselves but the same Lord who expresses them, the same owner. And there are diversities of operations, how each gift operates. But it's the same God which works all and is in all. But the manifestations of the Spirit, now I like that word, the manifestations of the Spirit, because this is the way the Holy Spirit manifests amongst His people, manifests in the church. But the manifestations of the Spirit are given to every man to profit. In other words, well, they are for the benefit of every person. But they are specifically distributed to individuals, and everybody should have one, at least, operating in his life. For to one is given 
the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another the gift of faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles by the same spirit to another prophecy by the same spirit to another the discerning of spirits by the same spirit to another diverse kinds of tongues this is different from just the gift of speaking in tongues which is the entitlement of every believer to another the interpretation of tongues but all these things work the one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills or distributing it says it is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts and he alone decides which gifts every man should have if you've worked closely with me over the years and observed my ministry you will know that one of the things that the lord does is that he does operate a lot in the dimension of the word of knowledge yes, and word of wisdom what is the difference between a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom a word of knowledge is supernatural access into what god knows so i'm in a congregation and god just shows me somebody I, I, you know the, the way it works with me i don't know how you remember that there are differences in operations it operates differently with different people this is the way it operates with me i would look upon somebody and i just know something about the person I know the thing not because I had prior information, not because anybody said anything to me, not because I've ever met the person before, I just know it. Now you can have a word of knowledge and not be able to execute any benefit through it. It's not everything you know. If I, if I turn around and I see somebody and I say, oh, that man committed adultery yesterday. Do I speak into the microphone and say, you know, this man committed adultery yesterday. Look at him over there. What good does that do? That's why the word of knowledge is often coupled with the word of wisdom. I've seen a lot of people that got graced with word of knowledge and they didn't walk in wisdom nor in the word of wisdom. There's a difference. I can walk in the wisdom God has given me by my own growth and meditation and development and the, you know over the years i am wise to know how god thinks in many things but then there's also the word of wisdom word of wisdom is not just knowing something about someone is knowing what to do is knowing how to apply that situation and in this case it's not your wisdom it's a tapping into the wisdom of god in that moment so the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom often pair up they come together word of knowledge word of wisdom and the spirit of prophecy these three gifts op often operate in harmony with one another hallelujah so you get to know i may the way it happens with me i just know <laughs> there was a sister who was in church uh, you know i don't want to mention her name and um I remember one time she and her husband, you know, had two children and as far as they were concerned, they were done and all of that. And she came just to say hi after church and she came to say hello and I just knew she's pregnant. I mean, I just knew. How did I know? I don't know. I just felt it. I just knew it inside my spirit. So I, told, I said, go get your husband, go get your husband. So she went and brought her husband. So I said, ah, bros. Your wife is pregnant. She said, no way, never, impossible. Oh we reject that in oh Jesus' name. You can reject it all you want. <laughs> I said, your wife is pregnant. I said, it's not possible. I said, your wife is pregnant. And start preparing. It's going to be a boy. Wow. He's going to be born in September. I just knew. How do I know? I don't know. I just knew. By the Spirit of God. Is a gift of the word of knowledge. The reason why God gave me that at that time for them is because he wanted to align their yes, will yeah. with his plan and his yeah. purpose. These guys were barriered up. They had used contraceptives. They had, <laughs> you know, tied the fallopian tube. They, tube? They, they had four layers of contraceptives, one on top of the other. Wonderful. And still she was pregnant. So I wow. said... I said, I don't know why God, I would have backed off from the first instance when you said it's not possible. 
I don't know why wow. God is saying this, but would you do me a favor? Just go buy a pregnancy test and take the test. Wow. Wow. A few days after that, she called in tears. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's when word of wisdom kicks in. And I said, listen, it's obvious that God has a plan for this baby. And because you are not prepared, because you are not ready, God had to realign you and cause you to see things from a different perspective. And as I began to speak, the spirit of prophecy came upon me Amen. and I began to prophesy about the future of this child. Amen. You know, I was in Maryland 18 years afterwards wow. and I got a call. And who was this call from? Got my number from somebody else. Wow. It was this young man. He was now grown up. Oh my God. His voice was so deep and he was telling me about oh the God. things that he's doing for God, the things that have been prophesied oh concerning God. him oh while God. he was still in his oh mother's womb. But his mother kept on telling him, this is what oh the man God. of God says oh your life God. will be. Isn't that wonderful? I haven't seen him for like 15 years. He was three years old when they left church. Father died. Amazing. Wow. Amazing the things that God wow. would do. Wow. Hallelujah. You saw what happened last week wow. when, when somebody that means so much to my wife, you know, had been sharing with my wife certain things about her life, you know, and certain problems they had been praying together. And my wife had said she wanted to tell me, you know, sometimes my wife does that. She loves, she's, she's a lover. She, she loves people so much. She takes it personal. And she wanted to, she, she would even inter interrupt the Holy Spirit just, you know, out of compassion for somebody. Scatter and break everything. But this particular day, <laughs> this was last week or was it the week before? You know, she, she, she saw that I was in the flow of the Holy Ghost. She saw that the, the word of knowledge and the spirit of prophecy was working. And her friend came to her mind. She wanted me to pray for that friend by the spirit of god but it doesn't work that way you can't prompt me externally to do something that is spiritual i hope you understand what i say okay pray for her also it won't happen simply because i prayed for her it happens because god initiated that prayer mm -hmm. are you hearing what i'm saying so while she was god withheld her she didn't tell me anything you were all watching and all of a sudden i just picked the person out and i said on zoom uh, Miss so 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 uh, sister so 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 your camera is not enabled now this is the reason why I ask people to enable their camera the way the word of knowledge often works through me is I will look at someone and I, I know something of course sometimes you are not there I may just be praying and I'm praying I, I spoke about Femi Adelui he was sharing in the youth program and bam a word of knowledge came Wow. can't remember it now wow. I'm sorry Femi but I pray the Lord will bring it again <laughs> you know so it sometimes helps a lot when I can see you it, it's, it's a trigger for me you know it's a trigger for me but in this case I couldn't see her she was blank I was looking into the zoom screen just like today and I just saw a name and I just knew something about the person's name and as I began to pray, my wife started to weep and cry. I didn't tell him. Oh my God. And I, I was taken aback because I didn't realize. She said, you prayed so accurately, exactly what we had been praying about, what we have been believing God for, for her. You see, that becomes a strengthening of her faith. To see God move in such a supernatural way such a powerful thing this is a gift god has given in the body of christ not a gift to be abused in the hands of selfish men in the hands of immature men in the hands of the wrong people it can wreak havoc and this is also what the devil imitates let me tell you one of my most uh, disturbing moments in ministry in my life I was given an invitation to come and preach at the Ghana um, Full Gospel Businessmen's National Convention. Actually, it was supposed to be the West African Convention, but it was hosted by Ghana that year. And on my way to go preach there, I stopped by in a friend's place, a pastor just like myself in Lagos. 
And he just started to gossip. To gossip about pastors. And then he went further and focused on Ghanaian pastors. And he started talking about the tricks that he feels Ghanaian pastors play. He says they will send people into the congregation and start getting people's phone numbers. They will start, you know, uh, observing certain things about people. Okay, you are carrying a red Bible or you are wearing a red singlet under your shirt or, you know, the little, little details. And then they pass these things to the man of God who now begins to pretend to have word of knowledge. And he went with story after story after story. And then he took an even more sinister turn. How these people go to shrines and all kinds of places. They call schools of the prophet. Where they are, they subject themselves to foul spirits. Just so that they can have manifestations happen. And of course, the devil, you know, has his good network. There was a demon present when you were brushing your mouth yesterday. I saw you say something. There was somebody present, you know, a demon or some spirit that was there when you said this to your wife or your son or your this. So when he says you did this on this day, don't just suddenly be open just because it was accurate. Don't ever forget the witness of the spirit in your heart. Thank you, Lord. You may pick on something that is true. But it's accessible by, the, by any evil spirit. People go out and say, my father appeared to me after he was dead and he said this and he said that. Of course, the, the Bible speaks of familiar spirits. They are familiar with you. They are familiar with your father. They are familiar with your family. They know these things. Doesn't automatically make it God. And you know, this man didn't understand what he was doing to me because I know how God works with me. I was just invited to preach at the Ghana National Convention and you now give me <laughs> a rundown of all the evils, in quotes, that you think Ghanaian pastors do. And as he was speaking, he was poisoning my heart and I was saying, God, I don't want to be numbered with these people. He was mentioning the things that when you look at it on the surface, it will look as if I'm one of those people. There's somebody here, this is your situation. There's somebody here, that is your situation. Same manifestation, but one is evil and conniving, while the other is pure by the Spirit of God. So I made up my mind after that poison coming into my spirit. I said, when I go to Ghana, I'm just going to preach the word. I'm not going to do anything else. God, I don't want any word of knowledge. Don't talk to me about anybody. I will not be classified among those kinds of people. I will not be this. And I made up my mind. I didn't want to see any manifestation of God. You see, this is what we often do. We throw away the baby with the wash water. Because it's been abused, we get scared and we turn our back to it and we don't even want it to come anywhere near our church or our ministry because we are afraid. But God is so merciful. I got to Ghana and the first morning that I was given, I was given morning rally to preach, you know, morning meeting. It wasn't even a rally. And I started to preach. I'd just gone about 15, maybe 18 minutes into my message. God interrupted me and I respect God enough. I'm humble enough before God to surrender to his will in spite of my personal bias, my desire not to let anything function through me, but I yielded. And I turned to somebody and I said, justice, the Lord will use you greatly in justice for the Lord will elevate you to the highest level of justice. And God brought it as a child. And God spoke to him and said, you will do this and you will do that and you bring these changes while you are in office. I turned around and turned to my back. By this time, the whole, you could hear a pin drop. The whole hall went dead silent. You know, when a real miracle happens, it's not screaming and shouting. People are in shock. Hallelujah. So don't, don't let it, don't, don't let the evil that happens around ever discourage you. It's a privilege. The Bible says, they that are led by the Spirit of God. I just heard God right now telling me, that, okay, just shut up. <laughs> and let me. So we're going to worship God.